Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new here, welcome to my channel. This is going to be a Q&A today, which I haven't ever really done, so I'm really excited to do this. Uh, I got a bunch of questions via comments, emails, etc. lately, uh, ever since I posted my newest videos, so I wanted to answer some of them on here in a Q&A because some of them are harder to answer in emails than in typing. So I'm going to answer them for you guys. About There's about 10 of them. My computer is right here, so if I keep looking to the right, that's why I have a list of all the questions. Uh, so let's jump right into it and get started. If Also, before I actually jump right into it and get started, if you guys have any other questions other than the ones I'm doing today, just drop them in a comment below or email me um, and I will be happy to make a part two to this video. Now I'll jump right in and get started. All right, so the first question is, what is the actual name of the diagnosis? So the actual name of the diagnosis is retrograde cricopharyngeus dysfunction, which is shortened to RCPD, thank goodness. Um, so that is the official term currently coined by Dr. Bastian. Uh, the other terms that this is also known as is dysfunction of the belch reflex or inability to belch. Um, I usually write can't burp, inability to belch, um, terms that people will search so that people who have this will be able to find my videos and know that they're not alone and know about um, the cure that is now in place for us um, and that has helped a lot of us so far. So the next question is, I'm just wondering what the cost of the procedure was to get done. Okay, so I had originally gotten an estimate of $5,000 to $6,000. That includes the procedure, all the um, anesthesia, all the tests that lead up to this procedure, and the consultation visit. So that includes everything. Um, the Botox that is in there is around $600 to $700, and that's something that most insurances will not cover, according to what I was told. So my insurance did not cover that. However, my insurance did cover parts of the procedure, and other parts I had to pay out of pocket. So they only covered some of it. So some people I know have paid out of pocket completely. Um, some people you can call your insurance and see if they will help or if they're in network. It really depends on the person, but that's the cost of the procedure. Procedure. Did you have to stay overnight or was it a quick procedure? Okay, so I did not have to stay overnight at the hospital at all. I went in early in the morning, like right before 7 a.m., and I was out by the early afternoon a couple hours later. So it's really not bad at all. When you wake up from the procedure, your, your like throat's just a little sore, like right around here. And they gave me applesauce, um, a little bit of water, and told me to just have like soft foods for a little bit to get used to the feeling in your throat that you have, which is kind of like, feels like food's going to get stuck, but like you don't choke, it just feels weird. You can watch my Chicago vlog, which I will link in this video at the end. Um, it shows the whole, the whole like week that I was in Chicago, including how I felt after the procedure, um, while I was at the doctors, etc. So you can watch that for a little bit of more information on like how everything went that exact day. Um, I had the procedure done and I need to burp. Do you have any tricks that you can share? I heard you say you press on your stomach and that helps. Where do you press? Okay, so that is a great question because I've gotten asked this a few times and I want to show it to you guys so you know exactly what I've been doing. Um, I do not still burp on command too much, very, very rarely am I able to just kind of like uh, and let it out, um, but I do this trick that it does work, it releases the air and it helps me to actually get a burp out. So it's kind of like semi on command. So what I do is right here, I press right here, like at the bottom of your sternum. And while I'm pressing there, I feel the air coming up and I'll push my jaw out like an underbite like that. And while I push that out, I push my head forward and it escapes. So the burp will come out. One almost actually just came out. <laughs> So there you go, it works. So that's how I burp on command now and it's so much better than before because I would just gurgle and gurgle and gurgle and now I can actually get the air out um, without sticking my finger down my throat, so yay. <laughs> uh, all right, the next question is, I was wondering if maybe you have some tips about how to take advantage of the Botox when it's working. So most of these tips I actually got from Dr. Bastian's office because they gave me um, an idea of what to do to train myself to continue to burp because after like the first month or two, you can lose the, you can start to lose the ability. So you wanna keep your body going as the Botox wears off. 
So as the Botox is wearing off, that's when you want to start introducing, they'll tell you when exactly, but that's when you want to start introducing like fizzy drinks. Um, for me, it was ice cream helped a lot. Anything that would make you gassy so that um, air would come up and then you have to do the burping motion, I guess, <laughs> the swallow air thing, um, and just keep doing that so your body remembers this is how to do it after the Botox wears off. So that will help your body be trained to continue to do it. I'm getting really out of breath. I don't know why. <laughs> it's like, I don't talk this much. Well, I mean, I talk a lot. I'm Julie, but like, I don't talk this much in a row usually. Whoa. <laughs> um, anyway, let's see what's next. Um, do you only burp now or do you ever still make the gurgling noises? Um, okay, so I do make the gurgling noises still, but very rarely. I used to make them like over 50 times a day and now I'll gurgle like once a month, if that. Um, and it's usually on like either a bad allergy day or like if I'm walking a lot. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't, I don't really gurgle a lot at all anymore. And when I do, it's, it's when I have like a really gassy item of food or something, um, or a Guinness, like, <laughs> then it's gonna happen. <laughs> but otherwise, I'm pretty good. Um, it's a huge, 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 huge difference from before I got the procedure done. The next question is, what were the cons after getting the procedure? So the biggest con, obviously, is that it can wear off if you do not continue to train your body to burp uh, while the Botox is wearing off. So the actual um, ability to burp can wear off once the Botox is gone, uh, depending on maybe just, maybe you do the whole like drinking fizzy things and all that and it still wears off. Um, it might just be how your body reacted to it or you may just need a repeat injection. So that is kind of like, um, you know, you don't really know what, what how your body's going to react or which category you're going to be in. So that's a little bit nerve wracking for people, especially that are coming from very far away. Um, but it's really, it's hit or miss, and most people have reacted completely successfully to this procedure with a few that have not, um, and have to go back for repeat injections. I will be going back at some point because I can't burp on command necessarily, like, like just sitting here, like trying it now, doing it without doing like little tricks. Um, so I would like to get, I have about 75% relief, I would say. I would like to get to that 100% again um, because those first few months were absolutely amazing. <laughs> so there's that. And then the other thing that was negative was the travel expenses and the cost of the procedure for anyone that doesn't have insurance. So I would say those are the only negatives. Other than that, like it was painless. It was amazing. Like everything was great. I really have no other negatives. So if you guys do, some of the people who have watched this and had the procedure done, just comment below and everybody can look through the comments. We have like a little family here. So everybody can look through the comments and see your experiences um, and learn from them. So that'd be really great if you want to do that. <laughs> um, the next question is, how many tests, oh yeah, this one, how many test specialists, how many tests and specialists uh, and how long did it take to finally figure out that you needed to see Dr. Bastion? So, <laughs> I'm pretty sure many of us cannot even begin to answer this question because so many that I can't count. So, like, I went to a pulmonologist, a cardiologist, a bunch of gastro doctors. I got x-rays and um, manometries and you name it. I did it, the barium swallow, like, all of this stuff. Um, so, I went to a ton of different doctors, got a ton of different tests done since I was, like, between 12 and 15 was when I started going, um, all the way up until when I went to get my procedure done with Dr. Bastion. So, a lot. <laughs> a lot. Let's just go with a lot. <laughs> um, how did you deal with doctors who didn't believe you and shuffled you around to another specialist if that was your experience? Yes, that was my experience. Um, I ran into a couple of doctors who were very understanding and were willing to admit that they didn't know what was wrong or they were very puzzled or um, like the pulmonologist had never been so puzzled with a patient in 40 years and like all that stuff. But then the doctors who were like, oh, you have acid reflux. Like, no, I really don't think I do because this doesn't sound like that. And like, I can't breathe in gym class. So I don't know. Um, but what I did was just try to stay positive and optimistic. And the thing that helped me deal with that was actually YouTube because I've been on YouTube since I was like 18. And I just, I decided if they weren't going to help, 
that I was going to help. I was going to put it out there and I was going to try to find something or someone to cure it or hopefully a med student saw it or a doctor, a researcher, um, or just other people who had the same thing and we could create this giant group that then doctors would be like, wow, there's so many of them and we're going to help now. So um, I started the YouTube channel and that really helped me so much because I got like stories from other people and I felt less alone through it. So I would just go through the comments or look at the videos of, of um, when I posted them and how many people had responded since then. And it just made me feel like much less alone. And it made me want to keep fighting to find something to cure all of us because there were so many people living with it like me. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I combated that. And I'll also make a video on like how I stay positive. So everybody asks me and I really don't know, but I'm gonna figure it out for you guys. Uh, so yeah, that is how I dealt with doctors who didn't believe me. I just stayed positive and was like, fine, I'll figure it out on my own. <laughs> so with you guys and with the help of Dr. Bastion's team, here we are and we figured it out. So yeah, it worked. <laughs> um, so anyway, that is all the questions I have for today. Please, please, please comment your experiences below. Um, it's so e everyone can like see who went through what and also if you have any other questions comment below introduce yourself um, ask your questions and I will make a part two you can also email me if you look in the description box all my email addresses are there um, my business uh, website is there which is liftmymood.com if you guys want to check it out um, everything about the procedure and like where I found out about it all the links to other people's videos are there so that's where you'll find all the information in the description box so hope you guys enjoyed this video if you have any other questions let me know and I will post part two all right thanks bye